Good morning to you. Thank you for staying with us on the South African Morning. Now, we all have been experiencing extremities in temperature. Yes, we know how we human beings are affected, but what effect do these extremities in temperature have on the animals, for example? Now, we do know that some of the worst effects of climate change are seen in the dramatic increase in the temperatures that we have been experiencing. And this is not just a South African problem, it's a global concern. But the question we're asking today is how hot is too hot, not only for humans, but for all species. That's what postdoctoral research fellow Dr. Shannon Conradi has been trying to find out herself. Now, she has been shortlisted for the JWO Research Grant for her proposal entitled Linking Physics and Biology to Inform Wildlife Conservation Under Global Change. It certainly is a mouthful, and she's here this morning to break that down for us. Dr. Conradi, a very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. A, a very interesting topic. What, what inspired you to actually come up with, the, with this topic, is specifically one that looks at different disciplines? <laughs> right, yes. So, um, as you mentioned, global change is probably one of the greatest threats to biodiversity. And um, the ability to actually understand how these global change effects will impact species is really important. So I'm passionate about, about bio biodiversity, about biology, and given that changing conditions is a threat to biodiversity, the idea to bring dis different disciplines that might have different skill sets in answering a very complicated question together to be able to understand this really brought about my inspiration to, to address this issue. And, and what gave you the idea of going into other disciplines as well? Uh, and, and which area were you actually focusing beforehand that made you think, all right, maybe let me look in, into other spheres of excellence and, and other studies and other research spaces in order to better integrate um, you know, the outcomes and the knowledge systems that exist to find solutions? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I come from a traditionally biology background focused in that. And um, my, my time during my PhD, looking at the different effects of it, I realized that species don't operate just in one, uh, in one dimension. There's multiple different things going on. Uh, for example, an animal in, in the environment is getting heat loads from, from temperature, and we can explain that through physics. But as a biologist, you don't necessarily know the physics. So if we're able to join these different disciplines to understand as a whole what the physical and biological effects are um, at a species level, we can actually look way further and, and understand these different um, dimensions of what's happening and be able to conserve our, our biodiversity much better with a, lot, uh, a stronger approach. It makes total sense. I guess that's why it's called an ecosystem, right? Exactly, exactly. It's not just one thing. There's it's multiple things happening. And, and they all are reliant on each other uh, in a very symbiotic relationship that, that exists uh, in order for them to, to thrive. So talk us through um, your, your research and what it is that you found in, in, in the study. Right, yes. Uh, so the idea is to look at tools such as advanced uh, remote sensing data, biophysical models, to be able to understand the environment that the species is experiencing at the individual level. And then if we can characterize that, we can start looking at their thermal vulnerabilities. What pressures are they actually experiencing? And if we know what pressures they're experiencing, we can see, well, how does that translate into their survival, into their breeding, and what does this mean in the future? Uh, so, so certain things we're starting to see is, well, what is the risk of dehydration? If there is a risk of dehydration, what can we do about that? Do we need to add more water sources, for example? Uh, what is the risk of hypothermia? Hypothermia increasing body temperatures to, to limits that they can't handle. And how does this actually affect their decisions to breed or not? Because they might survive as an individual, but if they're not breeding, that population won't survive in the future. So starting to look at these different forces and um, extrapolating that up. To, to the ecosystem level. And, and how are these research findings going to impact the future of conservationism? How is this actually going to be applied? Yes, brilliant question, thank you. Uh, so it will start off with just gaining a better understanding because we can't do anything if we don't know what's happening. So to gain an understanding of what's happening across uh, the landscape at an individual level and then looking up. And once we can understand what's happening, we can see, okay, this species is responding in this way, what can we do to make sure that it's not vulnerable? Or well, this species is very vulnerable, what can we do there? And I mentioned a little bit earlier the risks of dehydration, things like should we start looking at, at putting more water sources around for species? What can we do to make sure that we're conserving our biodiversity? Because 
South Africa and Africa as a whole is really rich in that and it's something that we need to look after, we need to preserve and this will be basically providing a baseline of what do we do next, what can we do next and what is the future looking like and how do we make sure we don't have a worst case scenario for our, our biodiversity and wildlife. Talk to us about the Jennifer Ward um, Oppenheimer Research Grant, um, how you actually got to find <laughs> out about it, uh, when the results are going to be announced, and if somebody is interested, perhaps a, you know, a, a research fellow, a biologist, a scientist, somebody who says, I think I want to be a part of that, well, what would be the process? Yes, brilliant. So the, the uh, award is through the Oppenheimer Generations Research and Conservation, which is a phenomenal group that really looks at doing actionable um, or delivering actual products to conserve biodiversity. And this grant is, is set up for early career researchers, people fresh out of their PhD, to establish a, a research group and tackle one of these challenges. And uh, because I'm very, very um, passionate and uh, have, have this love for biodiversity, the fact that they're doing important work really drew me to the grant. And I... Um, I am an early career researcher, it fitted my, my <laughs> career goals perfectly and it's basically to, to support young scientists to develop their name and to actually deliver an actionable product to conserve uh, wildlife and, and conserve um, our biodiversity. So yeah, for, for people who are interested, I definitely would suggest you do apply, it's phenomenal, uh, the group is, is amazing and um, they really they support you, they give you opportunities like this to come and talk about your work and um, yeah, if you're passionate, if you have a good idea, Put it forward, um, what they're really looking for is good ideas, people who are capable of doing it. So, um, yeah, and you, you did ask when the results will be, so we're currently at the top three stage and at the annual um, research meeting, I think on the 4th of October, they'll announce who the, the applicant or the recipient of the award would be. Ooh, top three, you're mighty close, <laughs> you're mighty, mighty but close. Yes, the nerves well, are, are definitely settling in. <laughs> well, at least the work has already been done, you know, and, and I guess that perhaps is the true value. So even if one doesn't walk away with that grant, of course it would help, <laughs> but the wealth of information that is going to be there even for future researchers and even the conservation industry as a whole is certainly something that can be moved forward. So congratulations on that. Thank you very much. I much appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a UCT postdoctoral research fellow and JWO research grant nominee. She's top three. Uh, so Dr. Shannon Conradi, thank you so much for your time.